Welcome, music fans. This is another edition of Track versus Track. I am one of your co-hosts, Matthew Jensen, and with me today we have Jacob Rosdale, familiar face, if you've watched our previous episodes, and we have a special guest and a huge Huey Lewis in the News fan, a huge fan, Mr. A.J. Hodge. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us today. Well, we are going to be Hello. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk Hugh. We're going to talk about AJ and how much he loves the Hugh. Uh, but first, I wanted to just talk about the format of our episode, because normally Matt and I go 10 to 1 top tracks. And that's what we're going to do. But with three people, that would take a long time. So instead, we're going to look, we're going to start with Heart of Rock and Roll, work our way from side A to side two to the end of the album. Uh, talk about if the tracks are near the top, near the bottom, very end, just run down our lists. And uh, that way we're not going on. You mentioned this. He mentioned it. I'm now mentioning it. We're not doing that. We're just going track by track and then track the track. AJ. I'm in. How you doing? That's my man. That's my guy, Huey. I've what been a Huey gen. fan since the day I can remember remembering. What a chin. So you've been, a, were your parents huge Huey fans? Yeah, my dad. My dad was. That was, I mean, I just remember he would always have, uh, most likely it was sports, like the cassette on in the car. And he'd always sing along. And those are some of the best memories I have with my pops is just sit in the car listening to Huey. And Matt, where do you fall on the, on the news train? Well, I had one sibling and she was older than me and she was a huge MTV fan. So growing up in the 80s, you couldn't avoid videos from this album and the, and the following album. And uh, I think I never like loved it. I always liked the songs. Um, and then like in the, in the 90s, I, I kind of forgot about it. And then like in the early 2000s, I, I kind of started getting back into it. I think a lot of it was just remembering AJ. So all three of us, we went to college together. And I remember AJ, and even maybe at the beginning of social media, would post a lot of stuff about Huey Lewis. And you know, it's like, I need to give these guys an actual listen. And <laughs> I became like obsessed with this album. I think like the summer of 2005 or 2006, I was out of college at that time. And it was like in the summer and it was like sitting out in the back porch, drinking beers, grilling, um, hanging out with friends. And like, this became kind of the soundtrack of that summer. And uh, ever since then, you know, I, I just, uh, I've got a soft spot for it, but it, my roots aren't as deep as AJ's, but it, it was certainly one that I was aware of, you know, for 35, 40 years. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I didn't realize I, I was an inspiration for your revisit to Huey world, if we will. <laughs> so I was so I'm glad I could do that. So I was alive in the 80s and I like Back to the Future. That's the, for a while, I thought that was going to be the only Huey album I have or need. And then I bought this because we were doing the episode. I have not had it very long. <laughs> and um, so I went, I was roommates with AJ or sweet mates rather. And then on my, also my roommate at Han was a big Huey fan, but I've never really cared <laughs> for the band all that much. It, it's not, it's not like it's, not a dislike it's just an indifference like and i'd never listened to this album but i've been in waiting rooms at the <laughs> dentist or the doctor so i'm familiar with most of the tracks on this um and most of these were singles so like it wasn't a, a very them, yeah. hard it wasn't a very hard album to acclimate myself to so uh this wasn't that hard of hard work yeah, i think you track. said did you say five Jackson, five out of nine. Five, five out, out of the nine. nine or singles. Yeah, that's that's fairly uncommon, I would say. Well, yeah. And if you take into consider, I'm glad you brought up Back to the Future. If you take into consideration Power of Love and Back in Time, which were recorded within a year of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that production sounds slick like it would go on sports because it's it, those singles were in between four and uh, and sports. So mm -hmm. it, quite a prolific period of time there for for the news. But uh, yeah. what I. For whatever reason, too, and maybe you guys like think this is totally in left field here, but I always thought when I was a kid that Robert Palmer and Huey Lewis were like the same band or the same person because their music just sounded like identical to me. And I, I couldn't separate the two. Like 
simply irresistible. Oh, that's a that's a Huey Lewis and the News song or Addicted to Love. That's a Huey Addicted Huey. to Love. I would say is definitely in the same vein as as Huey is. I mean, you could put that song up to like Hip to Be Square or something, you know, and they would they just have that same. 80s pop rock sound you know right and i know a lot of people from what i've read is like he's kind of a uh, a slicker version of springsteen but i don't hear that as much i mean born in the usa production wise has that definite 80s sound in the synth stuff but i find like these guys tend to be more like uh jay giles band of the 80s a little bit uh a little bit more of a bar band a party band whereas bruce is even the born to born in the usa album mm-hmm. did i say born around i meant born in the usa the Born in the USA album tends to be a little bit more singer songwriting. But uh did, Huey's definitely a bar band. That's where they started. Is right. they they played the bar scene around, and then I think the reason they all they got pop they just got popular enough and they finally decided to go into the studio. And then I think they spent a lot of time getting booed on stage. I think like one of their very first tours, they opened for the Doobie Brothers and they were booed the whole like the whole tour because no nobody wanted to hear Huey in the news they wanted the doobies right away so that I found that very funny uh and you know now they're you know they're still good friends and everything like that and I, I probably should mention I've seen Huey Lewis in concert like seven times in my lifetime so his he's live not shows are very anymore fun. though right he's got like tinnitus or something well he's got he's got a disease yet yeah, it's called Meniere's disease it's very Meniere. rare yeah. and uh basically he can't hear music he can't hear frequencies or tones anymore so it just anytime like a, a guitar will play or a bass will play he just hears like muffled noise so he can't find pitch so it's very it's a very sad deal they had to cancel their tour because they just released that new weather album uh, and they only had got to do seven songs on that because they couldn't finish it because his you know disease affected production Oh, so kind wow, of a sad deal, but he's uh, you know, he's embraced it. He's talked about it a lot. So I can't hear. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry. He's still uh, a hunk, though, right? What's that? He's still a hunk, though. I mean, look at those. Oh, I mean, yeah. Look, look at, at that. He's a handsome fella. <laughs> look at those so are those the same album, the same version, just two copies? Oh yeah, I was telling you this the other day. I, I got, I picked one up a long time ago, and I must have picked the other one up like ten years ago, but. One has a matte finish and one is a flat finish. So, um, and same with the uh, the inner sleeve. One is a has a glossy kind of matte finish to it. The other one is a is a flat kind of. I wonder if um, one's a reprint. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, I think they, you know, I think they're both. Uh, well, the only discernible difference is I think this one might be like a, a record club edition because there's this stamp here on the back. But I looked at the inner groove and all the right. It looks like they're both pressed at the same plant. But this one has like this R coating on, on the bottom. You probably can't see it. But this one, yeah, I don't know that. that means it's special. What I like about this cover, by the way, is they're, they're in a bar, sports bar, I assume. But on the back, oh, where'd they go? <laughs> they're on the TV. Yeah, well, the, the bass well, player's still there. behind doing one of these deals. I think that's the bass player. Well, he, they can't play without the bass player. <laughs> Just a silly album cover. Just ridiculous. Unbelievable. Yeah. That pretty much sums up my feeling to about you in the news. <laughs> it's just chi. It's just a cornball thing. It's, but, uh, it's, um, it's, it's, it's pure energy. You know, uh, it, I would say it's raw energy. They, they just love what they do and it comes through in all their performances, especially if you've ever seen them live. I mean, it's, it's great. You just feed off of their energy on stage and it, it transfers out to you in the, in the crowd. It's, it's a cool thing to experience. Kind of a well, blue eyed uh, James Brown type of uh, vibe too, right? Yeah. Yes. Very much so. Hmm. Well, let's, talk about a track that i'm sure kills live it is track one on sports the heart of rock and roll what do you guys feel about that track is it near the top of your list to get buried oh. near the bottom it's near the top of mine it's definitely near the top of mine that's i mean that's a that's a classic song the minute you hear that heartbeat thump intro you know exactly what song you're getting yeah and then it's a relatable song too. all the all the location call outs and everything that he's talking about for places for people. It's, uh, you know, it's great. 
Oh, we have a yeah. guest. We have another guest. Yeah, we have another guest. What's up? Can I? No, you can't play piano right now. No one is. <laughs> Only if it's Huey Lewis in the news. Yeah, you can watch this one and post it on Rip into a solo from Honky Tonk Blues. <laughs> All right. And then I'm going to subscribe. Yeah, she's going to subscribe. Oh, good. Like and subscribe. Click Great the button. Right. Uh, I'll just get to it. This is my bottom. This is my number nine track. The oh. oh. I don't like songs about rock and roll <laughs> after the 1950s. I think you, you covered that. <laughs> Bill Haley in the comments covered that. I, I I can't think of one song about rock and roll. Not Bob Seger, not um, Kiss. Joan Jett. Jo oh, that one's a little, oh. Yeah, I, but I also don't really care. I like Joan Jett, but I don't really care for that song. I don't like people talking about what they're doing. <laughs> and it's like being on stage, that's going to come up again, believe me, uh, with Huey. Um, also, I don't like songs where the names of cities are shouted out. I also don't like dancing in the streets, particularly the, um, <laughs> uh, the Bowie and uh, Mick Jagger version. Uh, so you want no real life in your I songs. Don't, I don't want to be reminded about <laughs> how much rock and roll is everywhere and how much fun it is to play rock and roll because I can't play rock and roll. I am not musically gifted and these guys are just rubbing it in how much fun it is. Are, there, are they from Ohio? Is that where the Cleveland thing? No. That's no, just... no. The, Huey's from California. They're talking about the Those Rock are... and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. Oh. Is he in the Rock and Roll Hall of, Hall, Hall of Fame? Ironically enough, he's never, they've never been nominated to this day. Kissing up doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> and All even right, on no. that, we talked about the 30th edition of this album that came out with a live concert of the whole album in full. And they performed that at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. But they still in don't. Cleveland. And they're still they're still not in there. All it's right. A, it's a dang shame. Should we say where we put uh, that song on oh. our respective lists? It was my number nine. Yeah. So it's my number three, actually. It may, it cracks my top three. Um, I've always liked it. I, I, I'm totally with you on the naming off of cities thing. I mean, it, it totally has that. <laughs> yeah, I can't start. agree with you on that. Yes, it's a little bit, it's a, it's a bit much. Yes. It's got We're, that we didn't start the fire thing and, and it's the end of the world as we know it, which is naming off random stuff. Like the lyrics are really juvenile, but it's funky. And I like the little uh, rock and roll teases at the end when it gets into like, uh, you know, um, the outro of the song or the code of the song. And you can hear like a little bit, ding, ding, ding. Uh, like a little Jimi Hendrix tease or a little mm -hmm. bit of a funky town tease. Um, yep. But yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a top one for me for sure. But yeah, but lyrically, it's probably the worst, but it's number three for me. AJ, for me, where is it's, it at? A, it's at number four. It's not as high. It's at number four. It's in the top four. So, it, you know, on a track, on it's such a short track list, it's really hard to, you know, rank all of these i found <laughs> so uh it's not my all-time favorite on this album it's a lot better songs on here so that's why i put it number four so another single track number two is heart and soul i like the i like this song better uh, i like the crunchy guitars in it it actually feels like a like it's a rock and roll song that's not about rock and roll but uh, I like Heart and Soul, and I'm not going to be a Grinch on that one. Where do you guys land on it? Go ahead, Jensen. Well, and this is funny because AJ and I started talking uh, a couple months ago when I did a album versus album track by track, and you you must have watched it because it was it was a sports, and I forget what it was up against, but uh, I made a comment like Heart and Soul is like kind of a forgettable track and, and in, in the comments you're like what the hell are you talking about <laughs> that that was a bit of an exaggeration but <laughs> it's honestly a middle of the road song for me and um it's my of the five singles off this album it's my least favorite so i have that song at uh number five. Oh, okay number five oh. for me as well it's in the middle i oh. i dig dig the uh that kind of theme that goes throughout i mean it Lyrically, it's probably higher quality than heart. Well, it's definitely higher quality than Heart of Rock, Heart of Rock and Roll. But uh, this is, of course, a cover written by a band called Exile, which I'm not familiar with. So it's got a lot of Exile. I have, a, I have an interesting story about that, actually. Um, 
Jensen. I watched an interview with Huey. They did a brand new behind um, the music, I believe, on the, the new Paramount Plus. They brought cool. back behind the music for that platform. And Huey was one of the first episodes they did. And evidently, Heart and Soul was recorded by Exile first, but um, Huey, it was kind of a song that was being shopped around to different artists. So, you know, it's common practice that, you know, you just shop a song around, see which artist it, it sticks with, and then they end up, you know, cutting that song and it's theirs. So they, it, I think how it goes was Exile was in the same studio as Huey and the guys, like just down the hall, Huey walked down there, heard them recording the same song that they were recording, and Huey liked his version. He thought their version was better, so they kept going with it, and then it ended up being, you know, one of their most popular songs. What's and the... it's not its not all that different than the Exile version, but I, I obviously prefer the Huey version. What's your number ranking of it? This one is actually in my top three. This one's number three for me. I love this song, mainly because Chris Hayes is a monster on the guitar. And this song is all guitar, basically, from the start of the song all the way to the solo that just is killer in the middle. So I, I just, I love the, the, the guitar and the instrumentation on it. The, it. the band is so tight. Anybody have strong feelings about Bad is Bad? I'll, I'll, kick, this, I'll kick this one off. All right. So the way I consume this album now, I said, like, I really kind of sunk my teeth into it that summer, a uh, couple years after college, just as kind of like a backyard barbecuing, drinking beers album. How I um, consume this album now is uh, I've got like 20, 30 different albums that I'll throw on if I'm going to exercise, like go on a stationary bike or something like that. When I know that every song is going to keep my legs moving. I mentioned something about that with the B-52s, that something that has kind of a consistently up-tempo um, delivery, no really lulls in there, because when you're trying to exercise and, and, and sustain like momentum, it, those, <clears throat> those softy tracks or whatever, those slow tracks really kind of break your spirit. And so this is one I grab um, if I'm just kind of like, you know, I, I got I got 45 minutes. I got to get, I got to get an exercise in before work. I need something that's going to keep me going. I'll, I grab sports a lot. Mm -hmm. So this song to me is such a dip in energy. I mean, it's, it's a 50 style. This is so. Doo-wop. Yeah. Doo -do right. So Huey Lewis in the news, they, they, they flirt between new wave and like fifties um, retro rock. And sometimes a little bit of sneering punk, but generally kind of a, a, a glossy, just bar band sound. This song, I do like doo-wop, but man, the, 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 all the vocals, the lack of instrumentation, it just kind of ugh, brings me down. And listening to it, if it wasn't for the, how I consume this album, which is usually when exercising, I probably would rank it higher. But as a result, um, I'm gonna put this uh, right, uh, right after um, Heart and Soul. So I'm gonna give this a ranking of number a couple actually i'm gonna give this a, a number um a number eight number eight so I, I get your reasoning on that um and it, it is such a departure from their usual energy and they, they actually make a point to do that in their live shows too where they do a whole like 15 minute acapella set they do like three songs and it's all acapella and it does kind of you know it, it, you're right it's an energy it's a it's like the bathroom break time you know <laughs> look at them and uh but what i love about this song is i think this is my favorite one of my favorite lyrical tunes is because he's talking about how you know sometimes bad is bad it's not you know it's not always cool to be bad <laughs> but you know he's talking about somebody being bad at the guitar or eating bad soup or a bad buffet somewhere you know like I don't know. I just, it's, it's humorous. That's what it's to me. about. <laughs> yeah, that's what the song's about. <laughs> uh, it's like, it's hip to be square and it's it, bad is bad. Bad is bad, you know, you keep it real simple. Yeah, I don't so have it, much it's to playful add. playful in that way, but this one is on the lower end of mine too. Um, I, I think I, I'm kind of, I got it at six. Yeah, it's my six too. I don't have much to add to it. Um, it's just in the lesser half of the album for me. Uh, and the doo are make me roll my eyes a little bit now that I know that they do it acoustic or uh, acapella. But fun fact though, I play in a cover band and we do cover this song. Are, are there any tracks on this you don't cover? 
<laughs> no, we actually only, I'm amazed that we can actually put, I just play in a duo. So for us to pull that off, but it's not like, like to bring back in the lack of music, you know, musicality in this song is it's a drum machine the okay. whole time. It's a drum machine with a bass and a little bit of guitar, you know, and that's really all it is. This one really too, I think lives in the eighties. Just the, 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 it, the, the production of the vocals reminds me of tacos uh, putting on the Ritz. It just has that <laughs> yeah. just, just yeah. voice quality to it. You know? yeah. um, but sure. Yeah. Clothing outside one, we have, I want a new drug. The track, when I was listening to this, and not the record, I, I was listening to it on my phone in the car. Uh, even my daughter was like, Ghostbusters. But clearly, <laughs> clearly it's not Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. But um, well, and there's a whole story with that too. Uh, yeah, we we know the story, but everybody yeah. everybody knows it. <laughs> we know the story. Uh, he didn't want to write the theme to Ghostbusters, and Ray Parker Jr. did. Um, yeah. But I, I like this song. I, I mean, I'm not going to be a hater on this one. It's not. It's in my. It's in my top three. I like the lyrics. Um, it talking about the effects of drugs, but it's a love song, and he's like, I want to. I want a drug that makes me feel the way I feel when I'm with you. And that is a pretty good guitar riff. I actually saw that the guitar, I didn't know the guitarist's name was Hayes, but he's the credited co-writer. Yes. Huey on this song. So, so fun, fun fact about this song is Huey wrote it on a napkin in like 10 minutes. Hey, Chris Hayes came up with that guitar riff and then the idea and then boom, it was off and it was done. Yeah. I can believe that. Can yeah. Believe but and this song, like like the uh, Heart of Rock and Roll, it teases a bunch of classic rock riffs too. Like there's that purple haze at the yeah. end. So where do you um, put it? I, I love this song because of the riff. Um, it's instantly recognizable. I mean, you hear it, but it, it, it's kind of somewhat tainted because of the whole Ghostbusters yeah. Yeah. thing. Um, it's one of my go-to karaoke songs, but I knock it because it's got the longest instrumental break in, in the history of songs, I think. I don't know. It's like a two and a half minute instrumental break. <laughs> it feels like it's forever. So it, it kind of gets knocked a, a little bit for that. Um, so I think I put this one at five. Wow. I already say my five. I think it's at five for me. Okay. Yeah. I think you're clear. Well, for me, I was either this was either going to be one or two, and I I'm back and forth all day long on this one, and I ended up settling with this. This is my favorite song off the album, and uh, if uh, you're and that's funny that you say that about karaoke because we're all kind of like tenors or whatever. And Huey Lewis, you know, you you've got to have some chops to sing the yeah. range of these songs, even though his vocals have kind of a texture to them or a, a bit of distortion where it's it's. It's um, deceiving how high those songs, how high this this repertoire is. Until right? you try to sing it. Until you try to sing it, right? <laughs> and and I think I did do this at karaoke one time, and it, and I was kicking ass, and then I was like, oh god, there's like a two minute break here. Yeah, then it's and then you lose all the steam, and then what do you do? I don't even know. Like I think Huey even live, I think he just leaves the stage during that that instrumental break. Yeah. So yeah, never again, never again do I sing that one. But there. <laughs> There is a couple of Huey Lewis songs that, that are frequent karaoke ones for me. Um, but yeah, I just love this song. It's it's like the perfect song. And as a child, my favorite song, ironically, was Ghostbusters theme. And, you know, they're just, they're, they're identical songs, basically. Yep. Do I like this? And actually, this is a question for you two. Which song do you like better, Ghostbusters or uh, I Want a New Drug? I Want a New Drug. Easily. Well, uh, you're, that's a, it's, I have to say I Want a New Drug just because I love Huey so much. But it's... I feel like I'm disrespecting my love for Ghostbusters by saying that, but Ray Parker's joked about how the only reason that, you know, since Huey didn't do it, he stayed up all night just listening to Huey Lewis and the news. And that's why the song came out the way it did. Cause he knew that Huey had passed on it, but they I wanted prefer, a song that was like a Huey song. And that's what he gave them. I prefer Bobby Brown's song from uh, Ghostbusters 2 on our own. Oh, that's a great song. That's, <laughs> a, that's great a great song. song. <laughs> that's a great song. I had both of those soundtracks. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And actually, 
my favorite song off the original Ghostbusters soundtrack is the song by the Bus Boys called "Cleaning Up the Town." Yes, love Ghostbusters. <laughs> Cleaning up. Well, we the have town. to do a Ghostbusters soundtrack episode. It sounds like we, it. oh, <laughs> that's the next one, I guess. We already know. <laughs> we got one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Now we're gonna go on Ghostbusters tangent. Yeah, it's my number one though, and I, yeah. I I feel fairly confident. But number two's close. Side two brings us to walking on a thin line. This is my number two. Wow. Because uh, I just kind of, I like how it starts with the, with like, I think it's a keyboard, bassy synth. It's almost like kind of emo to the lyrics. He's talking about curse in the dark. That pulse, um, it's got a nice pulse to it. And it, it's a working man's tune. I actually, I think I saw that he didn't write this one. This is one of the few that he's not a credited writer on somebody named Pessis and Wells. I, I believe this is a song about um, veterans coming back from the oh. war no. and trying to fit in. Yeah, yep. there we go. That makes a lot of sense, actually. But I, I kind of like the I like it. That's, that's one of the reasons why I like it is because he yeah. actually is singing about an issue. You know, he's singing about that issue that, you know, nobody really writes songs about it was a lot deeper than i thought it was i thought it, it, it is it's a, it's a deep a song cut. for a band like huey and the news and that's that's why i it's it's toward the top of my list as well oh uh mine's i've got it at number two. Oh yeah two oh. yeah wow. matt <laughs> i've got it at number i've got it at number four because it, you know it it's a it has a good strong melody good strong beat but you know you guys are talking about how like Oh, he's actually writing lyrics that that have like some meaning. But you know what? He didn't write the damn song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's singing it. He's singing it. I get it. Yeah, he yeah he did not write it. So the band that apparently uh, wrote the song is called Clover, and which I'm not familiar with. Oh, but... that was Huey's first band before he was with Huey Lewis and the News. Well, there you go. And the the the, the writers are Andre Pessis and Kevin Wells of Clover. So those those must have been his bandmates. But if yeah, you're curious, just... he played harmonica in that band and sang backing vocals. He rarely sang front vocals. Interesting. Yeah, I like it. By the way, if you uh, YouTube this song, I think the very first, um, if you just type a uh, uh, walking on a thin line and not like Huey Lewis in the news walking on a thin line, if you just type in walking on a thin line, I think it's a performance of Chris Berman from uh, ESPN singing it at like some ESPY awards or something like oh, that. Oh, awesome. <laughs> he really gets into it. And honestly, I think I prefer Chris Berman. No, um, I do know that Berman is a huge Huey fan because he made the, he was one of the famous people in the, the new video that they had all the cameos in for the newest song, The Off Weather. He's in there. I get it now. Sports and weather. I didn't. I didn't get it. Yep. Wow. You picked up on the theme. That's exactly what the point. Yep. Got it. All right. Um, another one I'm not a fan of is finally found a home. Oh. Because oh. It's about living on the stage. I feel like Jensen might have something to say about that. It's it, it just so cheap. Like so. Do you know where his home is? <laughs> Do you know where his home is? <laughs> answer it for so me. You're back, to, you're back to not wanting to, him to sing about what he's doing and where he's at. Where is his home? Where is his home? It's in a song. It's in a song. <laughs> Living on the stage, singing a song. He's finally at home. I don't like people singing about what they're currently doing. <laughs> Go to my number eight. Oh, number eight. It's near the bottom. But I assume you guys like it more. I could see it if you're if you're if you're more resistant to cheese than I am. Well, see, so for me, I, I, I'll go real quick here, Jensen, then I'll hand it over to you. But for me, this song, <laughs> it's actually my favorite song on the album. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's such you're, a all, deep... you're at home when <laughs> you're on the stage. It's because I have I can relate to that song so much is because I know that Huey's writing about, you know, He's getting tired of people asking him what he's going to be when he grows up. And he finally, you know, he wrote this song to tell them he wants to be, you know, he finally found his home and it's on the stage and it's in music and that's where he wants to be. And so I, I relate to that on a, you know, on my own personal level. So that's why, you know, I have it as my, my number one. And, uh, and it's just, it's a great melody. It's a deep cut. Not many people even know about this song. So I like to bring the deep cuts to light. Matt. 
I know I if I screwed this up, Jacob, you'll notice this in post production. I and I apologize. It, I, it whatever I put heart and soul, this this song and uh, actually uh, goes ahead of that. So if I said heart and soul was five, you did. It should have been, it been, it should have been six, and this is five. Okay. And I do like the song, but you got to understand, I'm coming from a place like AJ, where I like most every song on this album, <laughs> yeah. and, and it has to go somewhere. I just don't think it's as good as the four in front of it, because um, it was like, could this be better than Walking on a Thin Line? No, you know, I honestly think I like Walking on a Thin Line a little bit better. So yeah, Heart and Soul is six. I totally screwed that up, but I'm so sorry about that. But yeah, uh, lyrically, people are used to it at this point. And I think I'd said when we did that, when I did that track versus track with the this and another album, I think I said like how much I really liked it. And uh, it because it is such a dark horse, no one talks about it. And uh, I think the song it was going up against was like a single or a hit, I think whatever album it was, but yeah, I like it. It's just, it's, it's up, it's an upbeat song, makes you feel good, but middle of the road song for me. So we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, track seven which I believe was a single, if this is it. This is probably one of their very first hits, I think. Mm -hmm. Or no, that was Do You Believe in Love. But this, if this is it, was a huge song for them, yeah. Working for a Living was a big hit too for them. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. Um, if this is it, you know, this song for me, I don't know if it's because I've just heard it so many times. Um, it's not, you know, it didn't crack the top five or anything. This song is just middle of the road for me. Uh, it's talking about a breakup. Uh, if, if he wants to know if it's over, let me know, let me out. So it, relatable again, uh, upbeat, not a super sappy song. Um, so I think this one, I'll put, I'll just keep it at, have I said seven yet? I think I, I put it at know. seven. I'm taking notes. I, I, who knows? I love, I love this whole album. So this was really hard for me to rank yeah. all of these songs. This is my number one. I'll, I'll, I'll just say that. It, it's the one that I think pierces my armor for like, I'm being like, I'm too cool for you, Huey. <laughs> and if this is it comes on, I'm like, ah, damn it. You, this is good. This is good. It's under four minutes. It's got that. Uh, it, this is a much better doo-wop song, I think, than- uh, The doo-wop backgrounds are the are the, what yeah. hooks you in this whole song. I mean, that's what grabs you right away. And I just, I like his, I like his voice in it. Um, yeah, so this is the song, th that's a track where I'm, uh, even when I'm, you know, totally have my guard up, it, it, I'm like, yeah, I like it. I like it, if this is it. Matt, I, I'm guessing this is, yep. We already had your number I'm one, but it was up there. Uh, the, yeah, it was a coin flip too. Like this on some some occasions could be my number one. It's it's a slower song than most, but it's not a softy and it's not like super, it's, it, it doesn't have like a lethargic pace. It, it moves around and it, you're right. I love how you said it. It was like the better, much better of the two doo-wop songs. And I think in my opinion, this is Huey's best vocal performance. Mm -hmm. I just, I think he sings it so well. I just- On the I, album or on every album? On this, on this album. Yeah. I think it's his best vocal. And uh, I just love this song. As a matter of fact, um, this this makes frequent playlists for me. I don't think I pick any other song off this album if I ever make a play playlist of, for some sort. And I stick this one on all the time. It's just a change of pace song, but it doesn't bring the the, the the vibe and the the mood of the occasion down. Like, you know, if, if I were to say bad is bad, like that just, that brings everything just down so much for me. I love this song. It's my number two. Great song. So let's see if Matt's theory of the second to last song on any album being the worst track holds true it's called you crack me up does it crack you guys up how about these guys uh, um this song is interesting because i i've heard the backstory on this and it, without knowing the backstory listening to that song it's it's a completely out of character song for the group i think it doesn't sound anything like the other songs on the album it kind of goes back to their punky kind of days a little bit from their very first album in the 1980 um but the story i guess is that it was written about one of you know the song is about trying to stop somebody from driving home all w wasted and so the, the context is you crack me up because you're trying to leave, you know, like you're making me laugh because I'm not going to let you leave in your condition, you know. So with that context, 
the message of the song kind of changes a little bit. So it's more of like, I don't know, some of these, it's an interesting way to present uh, an issue through a fun, upbeat song, you know, that you wouldn't really know it unless you did some research into the history of the song like I did. It's funny because it just feels like a generic party track to me. It, and this is the one where I'm like, okay, this is, it feels like in any 1980s movie when the party breaks out at the, right before the credits start rolling, this yeah. will start playing. It, and, that's, and that's the kind of track I, I honestly don't like, but I liked other tracks less. Uh, so it is my, uh, wow, that's pretty high, actually. My number four. Why did I put that above? No, I'm switching. I'm calling an audible. This is, this heart and soul is above this one. Um, but I like how fast it is. Um, but other than that, it just feels like generic 80s pop to me. No, or pop rock. I'm guessing it's in the middle for Matt, too. Yeah, it's my number seven, actually. I. Oh. This and bad is bad. I could kind of number nine is sealed and de- uh, secured. It, it, it's more to come yeah, on that. Same. But this this is my number seven. Um, to me, this kind of is like a lamer version of Finally Found a Home. They both are kind of up tempo songs. And uh, yeah, that's interesting though that the context of this song. Uh, I'm gonna have to look at the lyric sheet on that. But uh, it just just seems like a lazy ass song. Just like a total a total album filler. Do I like it? Is it it's super it's super catchy, but it's so disposable. Like I don't know. It's not not something that I would ever consider as a. I mean, is this album high art? No, and and that's like the lowest common denominator. Like what makes this stuff so catchy and ear candy ish though? It's just that's just like taking it to on a too. That's even going too lazy, I think. And I love this album, but yeah, it's it's number seven for me. Could be number eight, but it's seven today. Track number nine closes out the album a cover honky tonk blues hank williams i have a feeling it's both of your guys is number nine <laughs> it it just it this one is just nine by default for me that really uh, just because um, number one it's last on the album and that's when i'm used to hearing it so i just kept it there <laughs> and I, I don't hate this song by any means and jensen threw it under the bus in his uh first video that you referenced with with good reason i understand your reasoning for it it's a totally out of character song it's a throwaway track that doesn't really hold on to anything he's singing about having you know honky tonk blue it's basically a country song and huey lewis and the news are not a country band so it's kind of out of left field for him but uh you know i i have it at the end just because that's where it is on the album yeah and and for me you know it's just it's a lazy cover i it's it's AJ and I are both musicians. I mean, when you're like getting through the end of your night and you, you know, you're looking at the last few songs that you haven't played and the, and the, and there's still a crowd and they want you to play some, sometimes you just throw out a freaking lazy ass blues song, you know, <laughs> and you jam on it. And the thing is the, the, the piano soloing on this song is maybe one of my favorite instrumental parts of the whole album. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love, I, I, I mean, I love a good blues and I, and I love like, competent musicians jam and you could just picture like Huey Lewis with his harmonica the piano player just just spanking and it's the- upbeat it's got a great tempo to it it's not a slow you know honky tonk by any means but it's a cover and it's like yeah. just a standard blues song and it like I wouldn't even consider this to be I mean even if I don't like bad as bad like that's at least he's trying he's writing a song it's different enough it's not just I mean that's like totally like phoning it in like oh shit we need to get one more song. We need to get one more song on this album. We only Let's have honky- tracks. Let's just play honky tonk blues for five minutes. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> but it, they do it well, but it's just it's not. Yeah. And, 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 and there's something to be said about what you said about it, it's probably a better song to bust out live than it is to put on an album. Yes. You know, just because it, like you said, it's a cover, but there's still energy, but people aren't really going to appreciate it on your album. <laughs> you got it <laughs> so jacob where do you have it i have it at number seven um just because they're not singing about playing well i guess they are singing a little well i don't know i just thought it'd be funnier to put the other songs <laughs> below it. <laughs> i know it's it's a lesser song and it's the definition of better <laughs> to close it out there but i have to be a little contrarian uh when possible so overall that was a fun discussion of huey lewis in the news um, yes I don't know if I'll 
I'm going to keep the record. I'm not going to sell it back to the store or give it back. You could, you could mail it to me if you want it. Or I'll give it to AJ. <laughs> I have mine somewhere, but it's in. It, they're all in storage. I do have some 45s for AJ. So did you know Mobile Fidelity is actually pr printed a uh, a copy of Sports, and I guess it goes for like sixty or seventy. Which for uh you know a Mobile Fidelity uh, MoFi record from the eighties, that's a pretty good deal. But apparently, it sounds amazing. Like wow. Sometimes the MoFi stuff, the you know the audio file quality stuff, they're like four or five times the price, but they maybe sound marginally better. Apparently, this is one of the like biggest improvements of the original record. Anybody who loves this album, you got to get a copy of the MoFi Mobile Fidelity uh, re rendition. Well, I'm gonna have to look into that. Yeah, Discogs. I think I saw it for like going for like sixty bucks. There's your MoFi plug. <laughs> well we'll have you back for picture this and the ghostbusters soundtrack aj that sounds great i also would like to um request maybe a track by track ranking of another forgotten album of, of the 80s bruce willis and the return <laughs> of bruno <laughs> the return of bruno please uh, come uh, on nobody knows he even did the album i bet sometimes i had to listen to this to come up with the ranch. i'm not listening to it. oh my gosh oh, that's my dream episode jacob right there but people should subscribe to matt's channel to find out what album we are going to next thank you aj thank you guys this was very fun i hope to do it again